All right, you guys, uh, this uh, Algebra 2 lesson is kind of a fun, easy one. It's function operations and composition. First, we've got to deal with a, a, a domain issue, you guys. Domain is, is x. Remember, it's x uh, values, so they're asking what kind of x values can you use. So when they say, what is the domain of this, um, you always say it's all real numbers, except if you have a fraction, then your denominator can never equal 0. So if you have a fraction and you have something with it in terms of x in the bottom, then you say it's all real numbers except you know those values that make the denominator equal zero. So say it's like 2x minus 1 was in the denominator, then you'd say all real numbers except 2x minus 1 equals zero, and then you'd sit plus 1 to both sides and you get uh, all real numbers except x equals 1 half. So another way to say that is uh, x doesn't equal uh, 1 half in that case. So you just can't, you just find out what would make it equal zero in the denominator and you say it can't be that. And also, you can't have any negative numbers inside a square root, so you always set that greater than or equal to zero if you have a square root issue right there. Um, so here we go. Let f of x equal 4x to the one-half power. Notice uh, only the x is to the one-half power. And g of x equals negative 9x to the one-half power. And similarly, only x is to the one-half power. Find each. Okay, so f of x plus g of x, and then f of x minus g of x, and then what's the domain of f of x plus g of x? And Okay, we'll get to that in just a second. Okay, f of x plus g of x, you just add them together, you guys. And since these have the same exponents, x to the one-half, then we just have to add 4 plus negative 9. 4 plus negative 9 is negative 5. So it's negative 5, x to the one-half. Okay, here you're going to subtract them. Again, since they have the same exponents, you just subtract the leading coefficients. 4 minus a minus 9 becomes 4 plus 9. So you get 13, x to the 1 half. All right, so your domain issues, you guys, are your x values. So, so remember, x to the 1 half is a square root right here. So I'm going to say x has to be greater than or equal to 0 because this is like 13 times the square root of x. This is negative 5 times the square root of x. So that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. All right, so your books will probably say all non-negative real numbers, whatever. They're just trying to be fancy. That just means x greater than or equal to 0. Okay, they're all positive, uh, uh, including 0, whatever. Okay, so here's some more. f of x times g of x, and then f of x divided by g of x. And uh, let's see, the domain of f of x times g of x and f of x divided by g of x. Okay, so here we go. I think I made a mistake. I'm coming up. I'm already thinking about it here. In fact, I know I did because uh, I just did this lesson about an hour and a half ago on my computer. Okay, so when I multiply these two guys, you guys, go ahead and multiply 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. And then I add these exponents. So I have x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half is x to the 1 half plus 1 half, which is x to the 1 or just x, so it's negative 36x. Okay, here I'm going to go ahead and, and put uh, 4x to the 1 half over negative 9x to the 1 half. Notice that x to the 1 halves will cancel, so it becomes negative 4 ninths. Okay, so the domain of f of x times g of x is x is greater than or equal to 0. Now, I don't have this, you guys, but the domain of this one is x is greater than 0. Uh, because I can't have it equal to 0, uh, when when I have a fraction right there. So I should have wrote, uh, this one goes for this guy right here, but this one, the domain is going to be x is greater than or equal to 0, because g of x can't be 0. Okay, so I can't have the equals bar on that because I can't have 0 in the denominator. So the domain on this one is x is greater than or equal to 0. The domain on this one is x is greater than 0. Okay, so make a note of that, you guys. All right, so uh, let f of x equal 3x minus 4 and g of x equal x squared minus 1. Find each. Okay, so let's find f of g of negative 3. So I've got to find g of negative 3 first. So I'm going to plug in negative 3 right there. So negative 3 squared minus 1 is uh, 9 minus 1, which is 8. And then that means I'm going to plug in 8. This is 8 right here. So I'm going to plug in 8 into f. Okay, so plug in 8 right here. So 3 times 8 minus 4 gives me 20. Okay, and then let's find uh, g of f of negative 3. So here i got to plug in negative 3 into f first. So 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 minus 3 is negative 13. So and then I'm going to plug negative 13 in right there. Okay, so I get uh, 168 on that dude. All right, uh, what else do I have? Oh, yeah, f of uh, g of x. So that means I'm going to take this whole function, g of x, x squared minus 1, and plug it where I see an x right there in f of x. So this x squared minus 1 goes into my f of x for where the 3x is right there. Okay, 
and then go ahead and distribute that 3 through and you get uh, final answer is uh, 3x squared minus 7. Okay, I just plugged in the whole g of, f, uh, g of x in for that x right there. Okay, all right, and then let's do the other way around. Let's do uh, g of f of x. So this time I'm going to plug in this dude, 3x minus 4, in right there. So it's 3x minus 4 squared, and don't forget you're minus 1. All righty, so uh, I end up getting 9x squared minus 24x plus 15. Isn't that groovy? Okay, so uh, again, if you're in my class, that would be your homework assignment.